The date is April 8th, 1999. What happens here is there's a line of town cars. And if you watch those movies, you see these bunch of like SUVs, right? It's 1999, I don't think SUVs are that popular. They're going to Minneapolis, the headquarters of Pillsbury, uh, the, the headquarters of the United States. Inside this is a secret meeting. And in this meeting are the heads of everyone in the food industry, the most powerful people in the world. Nabisco, Coca-Cola, General Mills, Parton Gamble Craft, and Mars. Basically, anyone, any cereal you've ever eaten, any candy bar you've ever consumed, they're here. Their discussion, amazingly, in 1999, this is a secret meeting talking about the emerging obesity epidemic. They knew about it back then. It's kind of amazing. Now, <clears throat> in this presentation, the chief technical officer, yes, they do have those, of Pillsbury, James Ben, gave this following set of slides to those representatives. In 1999, 50% of American adults were considered overweight. 25% adults are obese. This is 40 million people. 12 million kids are considered obese. These are, remember, 1999. <clears throat> so, what happened? I don't know if, uh, maybe some people in my church, my brother uh, does know, but I love Sun Chips. I seriously think they're the most addictive chips in the planet. Pringles? No. Nah. Sun chips. So <clears throat> what happens is when I eat sun chips, I would eat one. And some of you guys know me, I like hiking and everything, but if this bag is my presence, it will be gone. <clears throat> I've asked myself this question a lot. Do I not have discipline? As much as you know, we have daily prayer life and daily habits, I, when I have this bag of chips, my discipline just gets destroyed. Now, Snickers is really the perfect Frankenstein creation. And I'm going to quote Dr. Kessler. Dr. Kessler is the author of the book, The End of Overeating, which is a couple years old, and I'm just going to read it. As we chew it, the sugar dissolves, the fat melts, and the caramel traps the peanut, so the entire combination of flavors is blissfully experienced in the mouth at the same time. You know, you think about it, you might not even really think about all these things that are happening, right? The food industry calls this the bliss point, or it's called hyperpalatable. This is the perfect combination of salt, fat, and sugar. If we take these three components separately, right? Snickers bar is really just three things. If you eat nuts, so I like eating nuts, walnuts, and if you eat too many walnuts, like, oh, my mouth is so dry. If someone calls me like, hello, you know. <laughs> Sorry, I just ate nuts. Or if you ever, um, Eight caramel. Caramel is a one-to-one -one ratio of sugar and cream. And you only eat so much and you feel so heavy. Same thing as chocolate. If you just eat chocolate by itself, you only eat so much. And if you think about it, you can test yourself on this. <clears throat> I do like M&M soup. And this is an anecdotal study. Uh, the science has been completely proven. But you can do this at home. Grab one bag of M&Ms, put a bowl in front of you. Or if you work, put a bowl somewhere. Tell yourself, I will not eat this the entire day, from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., right? Just put it there. What happened, and I'm reading these studies from people, they're dreaming about the M&Ms. They're like, when they're doing their homework, I'm like, I need an M&M, right? And you think about it, it's just an M&M. What, what's going on here? The food industry also has a second equation. Um, this is a very recent study. This is from New York Times. And it's salt plus fat squared divided by satisfying crunch times pleasing mouthfeel equals a food designed to addict. If you, in El Monte, we have some really great Mexican food. And if you eat those like um, tortilla chips, if you eat the ones they freshly fry, you only can eat so many. You get kind of heavy because there's real oil in there. But if you think about a Doritos, right? A Doritos is this magical thing. I can just keep eating it. We have to ask ourselves, is this food? Genesis 1:29 states, and God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. What God gives us is really magical. Here's a picture of hummus. What is hummus? Chickpeas, olive oil, tahini, lemon juice, salt. That's it. And it's so delicious. Split pea soup. 
spit peas soaked in water, broth, we have a fan here, uh, <laughs> and salt. And it's something simple as olive oil and little drops of balsamic. I can just eat this and dip it with bread any day. So what happened in the meeting in, after 1999? Now, this is 2012 stats, 66% of American adults are considered overweight, plus 16%. One out of five kids are obese. In that meeting, that secret meeting, nothing happened. So what can we do in, in seeming of these seemingly foods that are so grasp our hold of us, the sun chips that I devour all the time, there's a couple steps. First one is when you eat, think about it. Ask, is this food? In Genesis 129, ask, is this food? Ministries of Healing, I want to say this is 1905. Keep that in mind, okay? I'm going to read this out. <clears throat> Grains, fruits, nuts, and vegetables constitute the diet chosen for us by our Creator. These foods, prepared in as simple and natural a manner as possible, are the most healthful and nourishing. They impart a strength, a power of endurance, and a vigor of intellect that are not afforded by a more complex and stimulating diet. I don't know about you guys, I think Doritos are complex. I think M&Ms are complex. Now, almost a hundred years later, this is one of the most popular authors. And when I read this, I'm like, I think I've heard this before. I think I've read this somewhere before. Michael Pollan states, eat food, not too much, mostly plants. Thank you. <laughs>